since some of the symptoms of FMD, like migraine headache, like high blood pressure, are so common, it's impossible to investigate everybody for FMD who presents with high blood pressure. 100 million Americans have high blood pressure. I don't know how many people have migraine headaches, but a lot do. So I would think of this disease in women who have migraine headaches. The doctor should always listen to the neck for a brewery. And by the way, that's rarely done. And when they do listen to the neck, they often listen too low. It needs to be very high up. So if a patient has migraine headaches and a brewery, they should be investigated for FMD. If they have high blood pressure and a brewery in the neck or a brewery in the abdomen, they should be investigated for FMD. If they have an aneurysm anywhere in their body or a dissection anywhere in their body, they should be investigated for FMD. So those are some clues that, um, that help the healthcare provider you know, focus and narrow down who's going to get advanced imaging to look for this disease and who is not, who's just going to be treated as having regular hypertension. In our research, we're doing a study called DEFINE, and it involves two components. One is we take skin from the back of the arm and we grow fibroblasts, the cells inside the arteries that cause fibromuscular dysplasia. And we compare those cells and the proteins they put out to control patients. And we develop, we're in the process of developing a protein signature for fibromuscular dysplasia with a goal that at some point we can do a blood test that says you do or you don't have fibromuscular dysplasia. We are not at that point yet. The second part of our study is taking blood and that's for DNA analysis. And again, we compare our FMD patients to control patients. And we're looking for genes, we're looking for gene drivers, and we're taking a system approach to evaluating this disease. Now there have been at least three publications linking three conditions together. The first publication was in Nature Genetics by Stephanie DeBet, and it involved patients with carotid and vertebral dissections no evidence of FMD necessarily, and found that these people have an overexpression of the PRACTA1 gene at the PRACTA1 locus. The second paper was a paper that we published along with the French in PLOS genetics showing that the same gene locus was present in patients with FMD. And the third paper, just published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, in which we were involved in, showed that this same gene locus is involved in people who have spontaneous coronary artery dissection, or SCAD. 